And the title of her speech is Traveling in a Pandemic. Traveling in a Pandemic, Wanjiro Murethi. Wanjiro Murethi, Traveling in a Pandemic. Attention all passengers. This is the final boarding call for WV111 from Cape Town to Kigali. All passengers are now asked to proceed to gate B2 immediately. Tundu. Do you miss the sound of that voice at the airport? Do you miss rushing to the airport during transit? Do you miss duty-free shopping? jet lag, and all that comes with international travel? When is the last time you used this? Did you know the Kenyan passport, according to passportindex.org, enables you as a Kenyan citizen to travel visa-free to 28 of the 195 countries in the world? Incidentally, a lot of those countries are actually within Africa or in the Caribbean islands. It's time for us to go and travel the world. Do you see this here? The yellow fever certificate, another very important tool for travel before the pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, this yellow fever card is necessary for people originating from the 47 countries that have endemic yellow fever. That is something that you need to do. And I'm sure some of this have been gathering dust in your drawers for the past year or so. And as we think about the effects of the pandemic, the tourism and hospitality industry has been one of the hardest hit. In fact, the United Nations World Travel Organization on Tourism said that the impact of COVID is going to reduce international tourism travel arrivals by 78%. This translates to $1.2 trillion in losses in tourism income investment in each of the country's international tourist visits. That is so sad. In addition to that, 120 million people directly employed in the tourism and hospitality industry have lost their jobs. How devastating is that? As a frequent flyer, I can tell you, my favorite airline that I used to earn a lot of miles on, South African Airways, and I've been waiting for them to revamp and reinstate flights has only been updating me on extensions and extensions. Their most current update on their website, flysa.com, indicated that international travel is only able to resume around 30th October, 2021. So I'm guess I'm stuck with you guys for a bit right here until that happens. But as I was curious about how international travel is going to happen, I did some research and specifically a case study on someone who was actually able to travel from Nairobi to Cape Town for about two weeks. So this is what they told me. Three critical things you have to think about traveling during a pandemic is to be able to take precautions, to plan ahead and to have a really prudent budget. So what did they do? Incidentally, they had to check out what the condition was in their chosen country of travel, South Africa. And unfortunately, between Kenya and South Africa, South Africa has more COVID cases. On the particular day they were to travel, 18th of June, there was about 118 fatalities, bringing the total amount of COVID fatalities in that country to over 40,000, actually, sorry, over 50,000. Comparatively in Kenya, according to the Ministry of Health website, we were only at about 4,000 or so fatalities due to the COVID. So they were like traveling from the frying pan into right into the fire. They also had to choose an airline. Now, a lot of airlines had been able to hold flights, like they mentioned, South African Airways, but others were continuing on a very uh, reduced schedule. 
they went on to travelstart.co.za, which is a flight consolidator, put in their dates to check which was the best airline in terms of their budget. They were able to settle on Rwanda Air, which gave them a return ticket from Nairobi to Cape Town for about 500 or so dollars. So clearly you have to do your research and plan ahead. They also had to get a PCR test to be able to travel. And this had to be done within 72 hours. They did it at the Amref Center at a cost of 5,700 shillings. And off they went to Cape Town. They had to take the necessary precautions in terms of wearing masks, carrying sanitizer, and reducing as much contact as possible between here and there. Remember, they had to test positive to get onto that flight. Each airline, for example, Rwanda Air and the country of destination had a website where they had to fill in their details for their contact tracing. So it is important to plan ahead and as well take precaution. Let's come to the budget. Where were they going to stay? How long were they going to stay? They opted for Airbnb and got a self-catering unit to reduce contact with people. They also chose to eat at home instead of restaurants for the same reason. So really, it's very different from when all we had to do was get into a flight and go. We now have to think of testing, precaution, and the like. In case you get sick outside, you should consider getting travel insurance. My friend was able to tell me that indeed, Air Rwanda gave every traveler free of charge travel insurance that was COVID related up to the value of 30,000 euros. Wow, isn't that something we all would like to be part of and to be able to get? Consider that in the time you travel. Costs always add up. Incidentally, while they were in South Africa, there was a lockdown extension, not in the area they were in Cape Town, but in a different region. But there was a blanket, uh, a blanket uh, application of the very same. So you need to plan ahead, you need to take precautions, and you need to have a prudent budget to think of anything that may go wrong. I wait to be called on the boarding and see you on the next flight. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. <laughs>